With gold finishing this week's trading again near 2400 an ounce spot, it seems the still relatively tiny onlooking world, and specifically the gold commentary sphere, is collectively scratching their heads trying to better understand the bully longs in the gold market at the moment, and why their bids on gold have been so consistent to the upside for the last few months specifically. Meanwhile, even former alleged precious metal price rigging commercial bank desks are having to update their gold price forecasts higher for longer. Let's hear specifically from one of them in this week's commentary on $3,000 an ounce gold within a one year time frame. As Citi forecasting that the precious commodity could have even more room to run, predicting that gold could hit 3,000 in the next couple of months. To break down his call for us, we have Akash Doshi, Citi North America Head of Commodities Research. And thank you so much for being here with us this morning to talk about gold. This morning in our meeting, we were talking about folks running a Costco to buy gold bars versus folks who are investing in it uh, via the, the market here. I'm curious from your perspective, what should investors know about the difference between those two and the room that gold has to run in this rally moving forward. Well, it's great to be back with Yahoo Finance. I remember in the summer of 2019, I was in your studios mm -hmm. calling for $2,000 an ounce uh, as a base case over the next 12 months at the time. Uh, now we think $3,000 an ounce is in play over the next year or so. And the big driver for that is that we think financial demand for gold is only catching up to what is strong physical. You just talked about the Costco bar and coin sales. Well, that is a global trend. We've seen bar and coin demand surge since the pandemic. It's now above pre-COVID trend. And that we think represents a strong alternative fiat demand story. Separately, we see the official sector, central banks in the emerging markets to be in particular to buy a record amount of gold over the last several years, including uh, over a thousand tons in 2024, which would be the third highest since 1967. Uh, we think this physical demand pool is structural. It is strong. Uh, it is driven by a host of factors and financial demand for gold is only catching up to that. I mean, if you look at the gold price performance since the February lows, we're up around 20%. It hasn't been a weaker dollar. The dollar is higher. It hasn't been lower real or nominal rates at the belly of the U.S. Treasury curve. Those are at year to date highs. So we think uh, the risk skew right now is still bullish for gold in the medium term as financial macro factors will catch up to what has been strong physical that has supported the gold market over the past year. When we talk about the biggest driver, I think that's really up for debate when people are trying to figure out how high the price of gold can go. Is it the central bank buying or is it some of those macro factors that you were just talking about? I think over the last couple of years, it has been central bank buying that has at least done two things. It's lifted the gold price floor, and it's also damped downside price volatility. If I was in your studios a couple of years ago and I told you that the Fed was going to hike to five and a quarter to 550 percent, that real yields at the belly of the U.S. curve were going to go from negative territory to plus 200 basis points, I don't think many people would have thought that gold is going to kind of average 18 to 1900 over those last couple of years and then break out to all time nominal highs in 2024. So we do think the central bank demand story is, is important because they're now absorbing 25 to 27 percent of annual gold mine production. And like I said, the alternative fiat demand story also seems to be gaining legs and tr gaining traction. If I look at global debt loads outstanding public and private since the pandemic, from 2022, 2020 to 2023, uh, that grew uh, 20 to 25 percent to 315 trillion. I think at some point it just uh, was a, uh, a breaking uh, mark for gold investors and gold bugs. And to that end, uh, we think that uh, kind of post financial crisis where you saw $1,000 an ounce turn from a gold price ceiling to a gold price floor, that we might now be in a period where $1,900 to $2,000 an ounce gold is actually kind of a support base and that prices are now going to trade higher for longer uh, above that benchmark. Well, I'm curious. I know that part of uh, your note here indicates a 40 percent upward revision to your 2025 target. Given the growth that you see for this commodity, what does that tell us about what your anticipation is for what the Federal Reserve is going to do moving forward? Well, that's a great question. I think the surprising thing is that this gold price spike that we've seen over the last six to eight weeks has happened in the face of more hawkish Fed pricing. 
We've gone from six to seven cut expectations at the beginning of this year, down to three to four in, in February. And now we're at less than two following strong U.S. Retail, uh, retail sales for March yesterday. Uh, I think from that standpoint, the risk reward is probably for higher gold because hawkish pricing is probably uh, peaking out. We don't think that hikes are really on the table uh, in this environment, uh, we think the Fed wants to keep 10-year Treasury yields below 5% or at 5%, and uh, that financial conditions are tight enough for the monetary uh, policy authorities. So in that context, uh, you know, we do think that uh, an eventual Fed cutting cycle will be a kicker uh, as real yields could uh, rally. Uh, even if they do uh, insurance cuts and nominal rates stay higher. Uh, to that end, also, I would note that uh, if there is a U.S. recession, which is not priced by markets right now, that could also be a further kicker towards $3,000 an ounce gold over the next 6 to 12 months. The same re-rating is beginning to also happen for silver, having just finished its highest weekly spot price close in more than the last 11 years. Yes, all the way back to March 2013. But more on that specific supply deficit precious metal to close this week. Back to gold. I would like for us to dig a bit deeper into the opaque gold market to try and understand better the bigger bidders seemingly behind the consistent gold price climbs. Now just watching price action since late last year 2023 into the first months of this year 2024 in the gold market. It certainly appears someone or some entities have been painting the tape to the upside, often in irregular hours, setting new higher price floors for gold, all while Western unsecured ETFs continue being rated for physical bar outflows into central banks and longer term store value hands. To do that, we're going to hone in on one of the City of London gold commentators who's been in the gold market for his entire career, Ross Norman. His recent commentaries on gold's price rise are worth an examination by us as they drag in one of the more consistent claims by many gold market onlookers that the price of gold is increasingly being set in the east. Well, let me remind you that ever since the Bank of England's LBMA started in 1987, the decoupling of the aggregated eastern gold price has diverged massively higher than the ongoing spot price ever since. To the tune of having added up to over $36,000 an ounce throughout this full fiat currency era during Eastern gold trading hours aggregated. The converse mirror of that bullish Eastern gold price aggregation is that within the seemingly lawless City of London trading hours which start on this chart in 1970 at just over $35 an ounce have whittled down to an aggregated gold price of $2.32 an ounce gold over the last more than 50 years of gold price trading data intra London AM to PM price fixes. In the long term, 2400 an ounce gold, it might sound high at the moment, but that's because Western Derivative Complex has rigged the price for decades compounding. In time, $2,400 an ounce gold is going to be seen as cheap. Onwards to recent comments on the gold market from London's Ross Norman. It seems Ross, like many gold market onlookers, has been looking for signals as to who and what is behind the recent persistent long bid for gold. In this first of three commentaries we're going to look at, he first recently claimed a large long whale in the London OTC options market. He recently wrote, quote, Someone has evidently made a monumental bet on the gold market via the OTC options market. The broad rationale for using the OTC options market is clear. It's sufficiently liquid, yet not entirely opaque. This really has been a stealth rally, and the economic equivalent to muddy footprints across the floor have been hard to discern. It appears a counterparty has taken a particularly large bet on gold and squeezing the market, arguably sufficiently large that could even generate a self-fulfilling outcome. As the bullion banks grant calls at strike prices above the market, they will purchase gold to delta hedge themselves as they are short gamma. As the price rises, they buy more, creating a feedback loop. Nice. But the devil's in the detail, which, because it's the OTC market, is scant. We don't know the precise volumes, strike prices, and expiry dates. All we know is it appears to be extremely significant in size. And they would be very much swimming with the tide in terms of the geopolitical and economic backdrop. A well-known hedge fund did precisely this back in the early 2000s with enormous success. Once the options expire, the gold market will likely discover gravity. That is to say, supply-slash-demand fundamentals will prevail. 
Meanwhile, time is against the Fed. They need to keep rates higher for longer to defeat inflation, but there is a mounting crisis in the U.S., with many regional banks suffering and the commercial real estate sector in crisis. So the Fed also needs to cut, and fast. And a rate cut traditionally signals double-digit gains for gold. The main takeaway is this move is a technical play, or bet, and when it expires, as a squeeze like this does, the market will likely edge back to reality. Currently, the market is massively overbought technically and is a long way from traditional buyers. Is the new information bullish or bearish? Well, that to a large extent depends on the arcane world of options trading and where the main strikes are. But my reading is this is a short-term bullish but longer-term bearish in the sense that this does not pass as a, quote, high-quality trade. That said, this has certainly put gold in a new orbit and will be giving it an entirely new gravitational pull. Now, before we move on to his next commentary, it's important to note that day-to-day -day gold spot prices are mostly found by leveraged derivative trading globally. Underlying physical bullion trading, of course, does occur tethered to the ongoing spot price, but bullion trading is dwarfed by representative contracts, typically highly leveraged, that can move the gold spot price around, up or down. In other words, the derivative tail wags the spot price dog, but it cuts both ways when it comes to leverage both down and most recently upwards. Now, I personally often roll my eyes when onlookers tout that China sets the gold price now. We just look back at the last year in 2023. You can see that China's overall contribution to the ongoing spot price in 2023 was what? A collective 10.6% combined, both the Shanghai Gold Exchange and the Shanghai Futures Exchange trading volumes for gold. Now, Ross perhaps this week honed in on the likely bigger culprit in the rising gold spot price over the last two months specifically, leveraged long Chinese gold traders on the Shanghai Futures Exchange, or what's often referred to in an acronym as SHFE. You see, volumes on the SHFE have exploded in terms of the last two months. The data speaks for itself. Take a look. In this post, Ross wrote, quote, Things changed in March 2024, just when the gold price went through an inflection point. Business on the Shanghai Futures Exchange essentially doubled in a month and then doubled again to nearly $40 billion per day. That's headed for roughly half the size of the London market in two months. In Ross's final commentary, he pointed out that leveraged long traders in China don't do half measures. He points out the pathetic interest in Western gold commentary on his website and the 20,000 or so regular readers on Zero Hedge when he posts his stuff. He states, quote, In China, the WeChat gold groups extend to well above a million participants, not just readers, and there are many groups. Further, they have a herd-like desire to hunt for what is hot. The Shanghai Futures Exchange has a history of having huge numbers of CTAs, day traders, and other investors that swamp commodity markets and make massive bets. And that's why the trading is on the Shanghai Futures Exchange and not the Shanghai Gold Exchange in one word, leverage. He goes on in his most recent commentary to state, quote, gold coming onto the radar at the Shanghai Futures Exchange was inevitable and they don't do have measures. It was previously copper and even soda ash futures for glass for buildings and they've now thrown themselves at gold. We've seen this before. There was massive gold buying on the Shanghai Futures Exchange back in 2019, but then it was buy and hold and hence prices, volumes, and open interest rose together. And cutting to the chase, gold is in fashion in China, but only for so long as it is interesting and has momentum in my view. Currently, gold futures volumes on the Shanghai Futures Exchange are running at about sixfold the run rate of the last five years. So in short, it looks like Ross late this week did stumble upon what has been happening in the gold market over the last two months, most specifically the Chinese like to gamble. And doing so leveraged long on the Shanghai Futures Exchange seems to be what has been the persistent bid that doesn't seem to care about Western news headlines or typical excuses to paint the tape downwards for gold. And while derivative leverage can and certainly has helped suppress the most important underlying monetary metals price and value for decades compounding, I argue with this chart since 1987, just illustrated by the damning data. At some point, the leverage blows backwards into a persistent leverage long winter's rally, ultimately ramping into a vertical exponential price mania climb higher for gold as gold price rigging becomes common knowledge globally. And future gold prices eventually start sounding like Bitcoin prices, the ones that we've been conditioned to hear of over the last few years. 
Now stick around on the other side of this break. We're headed down the silver rabbit hole of this equation. It seems some Middle Easterners are again waking up to the fact that silver is an absolute steal at these price levels and that prices have been rigged far longer than they might dare to guess. Hello, this is James Anderson on behalf of SD Bullion. Smash the like button if you enjoy these bullion market updates and be sure to visit sdbullion.com forward slash sweepstakes to enter our free 500 ounce silver coin giveaway. Want to win 500 Silver Tree of Life coins from SD Bullion? Enter and you could be the next lucky receiver of a phone call like this. Hello. Hi, Stuart. This is Dr. Tyler Wall, president and founder of SD Bullion. And I'm calling you to let you know that you won the SD Bullion giveaway of a monster box of 2023 Silver Eagles. Oh, my God. <laughs> you got to tell my wife this, because she's not going to believe it. Honey? Yes. Okay, doctor, let her know. Yeah, this is Dr. Tyler Wall. I just let you know that you guys won the Munster Box of 2023 Silver Eagles giveaway from SD Bullion. No way. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> she would never believe me if I told her that. I'm online all day long with your website looking for deals. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, your site's fabulous and your company's fabulous. Well, I appreciate that feedback. And uh, we'll be following up with you shortly on getting your monster box shipped to you. Congratulations again. Thank you, doctor. So click the link below because the next big winner could be you. The spot gold and silver markets traded up on the week with spot gold closing near 2,400 an ounce and the spot silver price finishing above 2,850 an ounce bid. That's its highest weekly close in over 11 years. The spot gold silver ratio is still hanging at 83. The Silver Institute reported another forecasted demand outstripping supply deficit for this year 2024, predicting an over 265 million ounce deficit for this year. That's six years in a row of demand outstripping silver supplies. My hunch is mostly unsecured silver ETFs will continue to be rated to make up for this physical market deficit ongoing. Price premiums being paid in China for industrial sized silver bars are relatively large at over three an ounce uh, over ongoing spot prices quoted. And you can see the persistent bid premium in China, the blue line uh, for physical silver bars has been consistent for the last year and growing. In a world with about 1 billion ounces of new line silver physically coming to market every year, and countries like India come in and take over 76 million ounces in a month because they too likely see the writing on the wall. Silver near 30 an ounce is going to become cheap. Get it while you can. The Comics' CME group put this chart crime on their blog this week, looking to entice silver derivative longs. And while it does convey the fact that silver is still dirt cheap relative to gold, I'd like to take a full fiat currency era view of which precious metal has done what in percentage terms since 1970. In overall performance throughout this full fiat currency era, pathetic palladium has paved the way to illustrate that we've seen nothing yet, both in terms of the perspective gold performance longer term and most certainly price suppressed silver markets. As happened in 1980, it's not going to surprise me one day to see silver's eventual price percentage performance spike higher than however high gold's price performance on this chart climbs. When that occurs, the uh, spot gold silver ratio is going to be substantially tinier than we currently see it at. Currently at 83, my suggestion would be you're talking well below probably even the 2011 spike low of 33. Kuwait silver experts are even chiming in by stating this week in the Kuwait Times, silver prices are set for a dramatic rise, potentially to double by 2025 as forecasted by Salah Al Hamas, a consumer behavior consultant specializing in the gold and precious metal sector. Salah advises being patient when investing in silver as the market is still adjusting to its dynamics. And just as it took gold years to change from being monopolized by associations to gradually becoming accessible to individuals, silver too needs time to find its place in the investment landscape. The manipulation of silver prices over the past 12 years is identified by Hamas as the primary catalyst for its impending price surge. Well, if we're going to play this common knowledge game about gold, we may as well do it with silver too. I got news for you, Salah. The silver price in US history has only been allowed to gallop out of its barn three times, or under three different silver bull market eras, if you will. There was the post US Civil War fiat greenback silver price ramp, then the 1970s Hunt Brothers scapegoating, 
And then the 2011 price reclined to 50 an ounce only to have Rico Desk JP Morgan Suave come in and set off one of the worst cyclical bear markets silver has ever endured, spanning from May 2011 through the 20 teens. A humiliating time. For the majority of U.S. financial history, the value of silver has been rigged one way or another. I got data currently that proves it too over the last more than 54 years. Uh, the red spot price line on this chart eventually converges with the Eastern line. It's done so four times in the past, typically during silver bull market eras. Uh, the fifth meeting of the blue and red spot price line is going to be occurring at much higher fiat US dollar prices for silver, and it's likely going to occur in a mania blow off phase. Today's silver price rigging via outsized derivatives climbed a wall in 2020, and the Eastern aggregated full fiat currency era silver price is now hovering over 361 an ounce. My contention is silver spot meets that Eastern aggregated price line somewhere again, likely many, many multiples higher than the near pathetic 30 an ounce quote we get told to believe day to day. Until one day the world realizes we've been collectively lied to for far too long, and specifically gold and silver prices are finally released to find their relative respective equilibriums, my suggestion is get your gold and your silver cheap while you can. That's going to be all for this week's SD Bullion Market Update. As always to you out there, take great care of yourselves and those you love. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and share it with those you love. Subscribe to our channel and hit that alert button so you know when we publish new bullion market updates.